Good morning, everybody. It is August 1st, 2023, Tuesday. It is 8.35 in the morning. Okay, so this is going to be uh, part two to part one of this book is in parts. So, for Home for Airing and Outcast Girls. Okay. And this section is Lizzie Bates, Tyler, Texas, Fall 1904. The two ladies, dressed all in white, hovered over where Lizzie and Dossie lay, huddled in a faded pile of rags. And she thought it was angels come, finally to take them away up to heaven. Her heart quickened. She figured on the Lord forgetting her and her girl, or maybe just turning his back. Keys clinked as the jailkeeper unlocked his steel cage, shoved into a corner of the room, with resting shelves for bunks in each half. They were alone in it, but for a man sleeping off drink on the other side. The angels bent inside to whisper over her and Dossie. <laughs> now she feared they'd take her girl, but leave her to die alone and suffer eternal hell. She wouldn't have blamed the Lord for thinking to do it that way. For Dossie was surely not liable for her mother's sins. Even if Lizzie was not worthy, her Dossie was innocence itself, though her tiny body was riddled with the same sick. The child slept at her teat whenever they were together, but Lizzie couldn't bear to think what might have befallen Dossie when she couldn't watch her every minute of the day and night. Either way, Lizzie was to blame. She had let her down so many ways. No more. She wouldn't let anyone, heavenly or not, snatch her girl without a struggle. She sat as high as the metal above her. Head always allowed and wrapped her arms around Dossie. The little girl flirted with waking, but her exhaustion was plain, and she slumped against her mother, cheeks fever red and dark lashes scarcely visible against the purple smudges beneath her eyes. Dossie could not fight. It was up to her mother to see that they remained together. But the angel ladies didn't move to take Dossie. They only stooped to look, speaking hush words Lizzie couldn't plainly make out, the swirling in her head and burning in her throat. <gasps> oh my goodness. My throat was burning the other day whenever I was eating that pizza from Rocka Bar. I was like, this must be spicy because my throat is burning. It was like all the way down into like almost my stomach or something. Made it too hard to ask their intentions. Perhaps she had not moved to gather Dossie closer after all. Perhaps, perhaps she had simply wished it. Or perhaps Dossie was already close as she should be. Lizzie caught scraps of what they said and the jailer's voice rose as he described their history and condition. How they both suffered from a foul disease. How Lizzie had earned her keep out at the county farm lately, cooking for the Negro inmates. How the farm superintendent had taken her into his own shack to live in sin, feeding her heroin to subdue her, and then passed her to the chain gang boss when he, hi when he tired of her. How she'd taken sick and it crippled her so badly she couldn't stand. And finally, how they'd sent her and Dossie to the jail, no regard for whether they lived or died. Her skin crawled. Damn the farm boss. While many around her had been hooked on dope for years, she managed to keep off it until he'd sensed her desperation. 
Then she took it gladly. But she hadn't needed subduing, not like a wild animal. She needed to forget. Lizzie had lived hand to mouth as long as the jailer had known of her, a decade more drifting in and out of town lately only with her girl, but for years with her people, a no-good cracker and his half-engine wife. Dossie, a wispy towelhead with skin so milky the blue showed through, had piercing near black eyes from Choctaw still running in those veins, same as her ma and granny. Lizzie marveled at all the jailer knew from his tenure of locking her up when she had nowhere else to go. One thing they were all sure of, she and Dossie weren't long for this world. Or one or both would slip away soon, with or without angels to guide them. To hear him say it plain was a comfort. She was weary of fighting for a place for her and Dossie on this earth. The women gasped at the jailkeeper's speech. Had they come only to eye her condition? Society ladies who wanted to witness the scum at the bottom of the cup at the bottom to comfort themselves? Then they could return to their pillowy houses to preach the perils of drink and heroin and impurity. She shrugged. If she could be a warning, she reckoned her life had some silver of sliver of purpose after all. She cowered when one lady inched closer to kneel near the pile of shredding bedding shredded bedding. You poor dear We're from the king's daughters, the jailer's wife asked if we'd take you and your little one to a place we know, a wonderful new home for young women where you could find healing and comfort, Lord willing. Now Lizzie grinned, maybe instead, the lady was a haint. Who'd suggest such a thing? But the woman stretched her ungloved hand to touch Lizzie's shoulder and Lizzie felt it, warm and firm and next the back of Dossie's head, unafraid of the pus-filled sores on their skin or what clouded Lizzie's vision until it was near impossible to make out the woman's features. Tears cut a path through the crusted grime on her cheeks. She nodded, then fell into a stupor, blissfully free of nightmares. Okay, so that is all for... Part two of part one, Lizzie Bates, home for airing and outcast girls. If you like this content, like this video or comment below. Thank you very much and thank you for watching.